So you just finished up your catalog for your clients and you're ready to export, but you don't quite know what the settings should be to export to make sure that your pictures come out as crisp and clean and just crunchy, as crunchy as you need them to be. <laughs> well, today I'm gonna go over what export settings I use to make sure that my pictures have that, that crunch. <laughs> Before we get started, today's video is sponsored by this empty bag of pita chips that I just finished eating before um, I started recording. And yes, mom, mom, my mother, Michelle, mom, these are healthy. I could read you the ingredients right now. I could read it all. Enriched wheat flour, sunflower oil, right? Sea salt. See that sea salt? Organic cane sugar. Look, mom, this is healthy. If you're a photographer, feel free. Grab your laptop get you some snacks, come hang out with me. And if you're not a photographer, then send this to someone who is. Because everybody everybody has that cousin, that niece, nephew, uncle, whoever, who takes pictures and they just started and maybe they're good, but just need that extra little push to help keep them going. So send this to them. Also make sure that you give this video a like, that way uh, Stacy's Pita Thins chips can sponsor me for real, because these things are delicious. I mean, just look at, look at, look at my face and look at the bag. We look good together, Stacy. Stacy, your mom got to go. A part of this also was knowing exactly how to import your pictures to be sure you have it all organized in the right space and, and all that, all that good stuff. All right, so let's start out with how to import. So on my screen, I have Lightroom Classic open. Um, I use Lightroom Classic. There's many different editing softwares to use, but in today's example, we're using Lightroom, so open it. <laughs> I'm going to make a new catalog for the photo shoot that I did yesterday. So I'm going to navigate up here to the top of the screen, go to file, new catalog, and then make sure I have my 2022 catalog selected right there. And I'm going to name this wifey in all caps and an exclamation point because I shot pictures of my wife yesterday and she's beautiful and I love her and I just, I just love her so much. And I think she's just the best thing ever. And I think that she's just the best and I love her. It's just so great. And I haven't breathed it all, but I'm just going to keep on rolling with it. So I can't talk <laughs> So we created the folder wifey, hit create. Uh, I'm going to back up my old catalog. That's just the default thing. Like I'm just going to ask you. And now that we have a new catalog open, you see here, wifey, we're going to import the pictures and we're going to go down here to import and click. You'll see I have my memory card already inserted, Nikon D850. Something to note is that each camera, each camera brand stores pictures and data differently. So for Nikon, if I click on this down arrow here, you'll see DCIM, you see Nikon, and you see under DCIM uh, 106 ND50 and 107 uh, ND50. I know that the pictures I took are in 107. It's just a matter of knowing exactly how your camera stores files and then knowing where to navigate to get there. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom of this screen because I shot some pictures yesterday that I want to import. By default, Lightroom is going to select every single picture inside of your folder. You don't wanna have all the check marks selected initially because then Lightroom is going to import every single picture with a check mark on it, which in some cases, cool, that may be what you want. In this case, I only want these like 20, 20 ish pictures. I'm gonna go down here to uncheck all and click on that. Now you'll see how all the check marks disappeared from the pictures. And I'm going to select from this file right here all the way down to this at the bottom. What's cool is I don't have to click on every single check box to select it. What I can do is click on the first one right there and then go down to the last one while holding shift and click on that. That will select every single picture between your first one and the one you clicked on. And now I can just click on the check mark on one of them and that will check every last picture that I've selected. Really cool trick, really useful, saves a lot of time, a lot of clicks, a lot of pain, heartache. This next thing is something that I've gotten into the habit of doing because it saves space on my computer. Up here at the top, you see copy as DNG, copy, move, and add. All these are four different options you can pick. What I pick is copy as DNG. What DNG means is it's still a raw format, but the size of the file is smaller. So you still keep all your data, but it's not as large as a raw file. What I do, this is just me and my file storage, I store all my pictures for the year on my computer and at the beginning of a new year, I'll then move everything from the computer itself to a hard drive. To save space throughout the year, I'll copy as DNG. And that's just to make sure I don't drown my computer in files that, you know, it just takes up a lot of space. Copy as DNG is my default. So now I'm gonna navigate over to the right and select where those DNG files are going to live. 
because if I don't change this here, it's gonna be saved into the Jacob Collier concert, but this isn't the Jacob Collier concert. These are shots of wifey. So I'm gonna go down here all the way to the bottom, uh, click on wifey, and that's where the DNG files are going to be imported. Now I'm ready to import. I'm gonna click on import there. You'll see the center screen start to populate with all the pictures that I've selected. You'll see the operations and progress up top here. Once it's done pulling in the pictures, it's going to convert to DNG. You see that here in the top left corner. There we go, 15 pictures were converted to DNG, just like that. And now I'm ready to edit. That thing that sounds like a jet engine taking off in the background, that's that's my computer. Like, listen to, you hear that? It's my computer, it's tough work. <laughs> So let's say I've done the whole catalog. Uh, for this sake here, I have three finished pictures. I have this one, I have this one here, and then I have this one, there we go. Now I'm going to export these pictures. So now I'm gonna go up to the top of the screen. I'm gonna click on this drop down arrow, click on library to go back to the main screen here. And what I like to do when I edit is I like to flag all the pictures that I've edited and want to export. So that way it's easier to find. Right now you can see all 15 pictures, but I don't wanna quite uh, export all 15 or I don't want to have to look through in case it's a really big catalog and try to find which ones are the ones I want to keep. So I flag them by, let's see, going back to develop here. See right down here, you have a flag icon. I can select it or unselect it. So now it's unselected and now it is selected. If we go over to library or really anywhere and go down to filter and select flags, you now have the three pictures that I flagged or that I've completed here ready to go i don't have to go looking for them let's say i want to export just one of those pictures i'm going to click on the one i want to do which is let's say number three in this case three. Pick number three, my lord. and i'm going to go down to export now here's where all my settings come into play export to hard drive this is going to export to my computer straight away export to a specific folder you have different options in here and i'm going to choose which specific folder it's going to go into click choose I'm going to navigate backwards to the folder titled wifey, double click on that and press choose. Now you see the path right there, uh, M Cornwall documents pictures 2022 wifey. It's going to save all my final pictures to that folder. Uh, let's see here. Existing files says ask what to do. Um, I have it set to that in case I name a file the same thing as another file in that same folder. I don't want to accidentally overwrite if I didn't mean to. So I wanted to ask me in case that ever, that ever happens. Going down a little bit here to the second category, file naming. Um, I, I have selected rename to custom name sequence. This means I get to pick whatever I want the file name to be and that it's going to go in a sequence. Start number is gonna be number one. In case number one already exists, it'll go over to number two. So for this sake, I'm gonna put export setting tutorial and start number is going to be number one. So these next two categories are the two categories that are probably most important when it comes to exporting your pictures. Your file settings and your image sizing. File settings, I go with just straight up JPEG. I don't want to do original because that file size is too big. When I import a raw file, it's 50 megabytes. And imagine if I'm, if I'm exporting a wedding of 200 pictures, 50 megabytes a piece, the math is gonna go somewhere on the screen. A it's a lot of it's a lot of just data and Wait no one wants to download that much data. It's crazy. No, sir. So we're gonna export as a JPEG. Next thing over here, image quality. I don't actually export at 100% image quality. I export at 94 because who's gonna notice that 6% difference? Who? Who? You? Are you gonna notice it? No, no one has. The 94% is gonna make sure that the file size is down as much as possible while still making sure the image again is sharp and crisp and crunchy. The color space is going to be sRGB. The other options are Display P3, Adobe, RBG, and Pro Photo. I just keep it plain and simple, standard RGB. It doesn't mess with any of my colors post export. It's just simple and clean. Now this next part, in case you have a client who's asking for specific file sizes for whatever reason, it could be for a social media profile. I know that things like Google only lets you upload pictures that are like two megabytes or four or something like that. In case you need to make sure you limit your file sizes, you can click on this here and limit it 
by kilobytes. Make sure you do the math. 1000 kilobytes is one megabyte. So just do the math. But because I don't need to limit the file size for everyday work, I have this turned off, but it's still still good to know. The last category is image sizing. So this next check mark resize to fit, you can go back and forth on. I've seen people go against it. I've seen people for it. Um, resize to fit. The reason why I resize to fit the megapixels is because my camera shoots in like 45 or 48 megapixels. It's it's somewhere in there. And not everybody needs that kind of crazy image megapixel quality. That's really not necessary. So what I do is I crunch the megapixels down to 12. 12 is the standard megapixel size for an iPhone. I wanna make sure that megapixels wise, I'm at least matching the latest version of an iPhone, which should be 12. And then the next one is pretty standard that you'll see here, resolution. Um, I put mine at 300 pixels per inch. That's pretty standard. If you, need, if you need higher quality, then you can definitely bump it up more, but 300 pixels per inch, standard and good to go. I don't really sharpen for screen too much. It depends on where it's going. If this is going for a paper publication, you don't need to sharpen for screen. If you're putting this online, on your online portfolio, on Instagram, uh, somewhere in social media, you can sharpen for screen, the standard amount or whatever your choice here is. It's not important. It, it's, it doesn't make or break your picture at all. Metadata, that's just to show if you own the picture or not, pretty much. Watermarking is up to you. I don't watermark my pictures because I, don't deem it necessary. And post-processing, um, that's just kind of what the, what the program's going to do after you're done exporting, which I say do nothing. Those make up my export settings. Um, now I do have the settings saved in case I change the settings for whatever reason. I have it saved under user presets as my standard export. To save your export settings, you can dial it in however you need it to be and then press add. Name it what you'd like under user presets, press create, and then it'll show up right under here. But at that point, you're all ready to export. So you press export, let it do its thing. Well, okay, well, I'm looking at you now. So my screen is like, well, I have two screens. I have one that's right down here on the table, and then I have one that's also to the side of the camera. I need to make sure that when I record, I don't have the side one turned out because sometimes it's habit to just look at the one that's over here. And then you see me like, yeah guys, so we're just gonna do exports today. And it doesn't look good, you know what I'm saying? So like, I, we don't have eye contact. Look at me, look at me, I'm gonna zoom it in. Look at me in my, is this the wrong way? Is this the right way? Look at me, look at my eyes. We're making eye contact right now. This is what matters, right? Right here, look into, look into, straight into my eyes. Staring contest. Here we go, ready? Three, two, one. How am I already losing? <laughs> if you beat me, because that was terrible. If you beat me, then good job. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Okay, uh, let's say you want to select multiple pictures at once. You use the same trick that you use when you import it. If you click and then hold down the shift key and click one more time, you'll then select every picture within that one range. And this is where the sequencing comes into play when you export. So when you press export now, you'll see up top export three files instead of just one. And we have export setting tutorials start number one, meaning the first picture in this sequence will be number one and then two and then three. We will press export. And this is something else that I talked about earlier. Um, it's now saying that export setting tutorial one already exists. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna overwrite the old one, uh, skip the new one, cancel and go back or choose unique names per file so that both can exist in the same folder. In this case, I don't need the original one because it's the same thing. You can either overwrite or skip, doesn't quite matter which one. I'm gonna press overwrite this time around. You'll see here in the top left, export three files. That progress bar will move like it just did based on how far along it is. And once it's done, we'll be able to see all three files together in the folder. And now that I've navigated over to the wifey folder, you see the three pictures that I have uh, exported just a minute ago and there they are. I think a lot of newer photographers can get their export settings either wrong or mixed up because they don't really know what each thing does or the importance of sending files that aren't massive. If you saved every single detail in this large raw file and exported it in as highest quality possible and it turns out to be 80 megabytes and you send five pictures that's gonna take a long time, one, to send to anybody, 
And then two, once your client gets it, that's gonna take up a lot of space in their own personal hard drives. Additionally, that makes it hard to send in the first place because you have to put that either on a Dropbox or we transfer or flash drive, hard drive, whatever. You have to put it somewhere. And these things only have a certain amount of storage. If your simple 20 picture catalog is taking up five gigabytes of space, that's a lot. That's too much for anybody to handle. The average client is going to be posting this on Instagram, maybe getting it printed. They most likely won't be putting this on a billboard or somewhere where it needs to be really blown up really, really large. So for that reason, on these smaller screens, on computer screens, on your phone screens, uh, when printing, you want to make sure the file size is as small as possible while still keeping as much detail as possible. Most times under these export settings that'll land around nine to 11 megabytes, you still can get away with exporting at smaller sizes. One last thing, I tend to use WeTransfer to transfer my files over to my clients. Um, I don't tend to use Dropbox as much because the Dropbox only lets you keep around two gigabytes of data on your personal Dropbox before you have to kind of reorganize and 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 figure out what you're going to do with those old files and you have to hope that your client downloaded it and all this stuff google drive is also a good option but what gets tricky is permissions if you don't have permissions set up right it can be a real headache for your clients to download the pictures that you're trying to send them now we transfer will let you send up to two gigabytes in one email and it doesn't store it on their website so that means with these export settings that i showed you today you can send around 200 or so pictures in one email and there's no permissions, there's no worrying about space, nothing like that. Yeah, so hopefully you learned something from that. If you did, let me know down in the comments. And if you have any other questions about exporting or importing or anything like that, again, let me know down in the comments. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and handle that. Click it, tap it, do what you gotta do. And make sure that you like the video so 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 that Stacy's can sponsor me for real, for real. Cause I mean, look at this, look at my face and look at Stacy's. We look good, look at, I love these chips. They're so delicious and they're so healthy, mom. They're so good for me. They're so good. <laughs>